the black reaper by bernard edward j capes now i am to tell you of a thing that befell in the year sixteen sixty five of the great plague when the hearts of certain amongst men grown callous and wickedness upon that rebound from an inhuman austerity were open to the vision of a terror that moved and spoke not in the silent places of the fields for as much as however in the recovery from delirium a patient may marvel over the incredulity of neighbors who refuse to give credence to the presentiments that have been ipso facto to him so the nation being sound again and its constitution hale i expect little but a laugh for my piety in relating of the following incident which nevertheless is as essential true as that he who shall look through the knot-hole in the plank of a coffin shall acquire the evil eye for indeed in those days of a wild fear and confusion when every condition that maketh for reason was set wandering by a devious path and all men sitting as in a theatre of death looked to see the curtain rise upon god knows what horrors it was vouchsafed to many to witness sights and sounds beyond the compass of nature and that as if the devil and his minions had profited by the anarchy to slip unobserved into the world and i know that this is so for all the insolence of a recovered scepticism and as to the unseen we are like one that traverseth the dark with a lantern himself the skipper of a little moving blot of light but a positive mark for any secret foe without the circumference of its radiance be that as it may and whether it was our particular ill fortune or as some asserted our particular wickedness that made of our village an inviting back door of entrance to the prince of darkness i know not but so it is that disease and contagion are ever inclined to penetrate by way of flaws or humours where the veil of the flesh is already perforated as a kite circleth round its quarry looking for the weak place to strike and without doubt in that land of corruption we were a very foul blot indeed how this came about it were idle to speculate yet no man shall have the hardihood to affirm that it was otherwise nor do i seek to extenuate myself who was in truth no better than my neighbours in most that made us a community of drunkards and forswearers both lewd and abominable for in that village a depravity that was like madness had come to possess the heads of the people and no man durst take his stand on honesty or even common decency for fear he should be set upon by his comrades and drummed out of his government on a pint pot yet for myself i will say was one only redeeming quality and that was the pure love i bore to my solitary orphan child the little marjorie now our vicar a patient and god-fearing man for all his predial tithes were appropriated by his lord that was an absentee and a sheriff in london did little to stem that current of lewdness that had set in strong with the restoration and this was from no lack of virtue in himself but rather from a natural invertebracy as one may say and an order of mind that yet being no order it made the sport of any sophister with a wit for paragram thus it always is that mere example is of little avail without a precept of which however it is an important condition and that the successful directors of men be not those who go to the van and lead unconscious of the jibes and mockery in the rear but such rather as drive the mob before them with a smiting hand and no infirmity of purpose so if a certain affection for our pastor dwelt in our hearts no title of respect was there to leaven it and justify his high office before him that consigned the trust and ever deeper and deeper we sank in the slough of corruption until it was brought about this pass but not but some scourging depotism of the church should acquit us of the fate of sodom that such at the eleventh hour was vouchsafed us of god's mercy it is my purpose to show and doubtless this offering of a loophole 
was to account by reason of the devil's having debarked his reserves as it were in our port and so quartering upon us a soldiery that we were had no invitation of our own to maintain stood us a certain extenuation it was late in the order of things before in our village so much as a rumor of the plague reached us newspapers were not in those days and reports being by word of mouth travelled slowly and were often spent bullets by the time they fell amongst us yet by may some gossip there was of the distemper having gotten a hold in certain quarters of london and increasing and this alarmed our people though it made no abatement of their profligacy but presently the reports coming thicker with confirmation of the terror and panic that was enlarging on all sides we must take measures for our safety though into june and july when the pestilence was raging none infected had come our way and that from our remote and isolated position yet it needs but fear for the crown to that wickedness that is self-indulgence and forasmuch as this fear fattens like a toadstool on the decomposition it springs from it grew with us to the proportions that we were set to kill or destroy any that should approach us from the stricken districts and then suddenly there appeared in our midst he that was appointed to be our scourge and our cautery whence he came or how no man of us could say only one day we were a community of oysterers and scoffers impious and abominable and the next he was among us smiting and thundering some would have it that he was an old collegiate of our vicars but at last one of those wandering dissenters that found never as now the times opportune to their teachings a theory to which our minister's treatment of the stranger gave colour for from the moment of his appearance he took the reins of government as it were appropriating the pulpit and launching his bolts therefrom with the full consent and encouragement of the other there were those again who were resolved that his commission from a high place whither news of our infamy had reached and that we had best give him a respectful hearing lest we should run a chance of having our hearing stopped altogether a few were convinced he was no man at all but rather a fiend sent to thresh us with the scourge of our own contriving that we might be tender like steak for the cooking and yet other few regarded him with terror as an actual figure or embodiment of the distemper but generally after the first surprise the feeling of resentment at his intrusion woke and gained ground and we were much put about that he should have thus assumed the pastorship without invitation quartering with our vicar who kept himself aloof and was little seen and seeking to drive us by terror and amazement and a great menace of retribution for in truth this was not the method to which we were wont and it both angered and disturbed us this feeling would have enlarged the sooner perhaps were it not for a certain restraining influence possessed of the newcomer which neighbored him with darkness and mystery for he was above the common tall and ever appeared in public with a slouched hat that concealed all the upper part of his face and showed little otherwise but the dense black beard that dropped upon his breast like a shadow now with august came a fresh burst of panic how the desolation increased and the land was overrun with swarms of infected persons seeking an asylum from the city and our anger rose higher against the stranger who yet dwelt with us and encouraged the distemper of our minds by furious denunciations of our guilt thus far for all the corruption of our hearts we had maintained the practice of church-going thinking maybe poor foes to hoodwink the almighty with a show of reverence but now as by a common consent we neglected the observances and loitered of a sabbath in the fields and thither at the last the strange man pursued us and ended the matter for so it fell that at the time of the harvest ripening a goodish body of us males who gathered one sunday for coolness about the neighbourhood of the dripping well 
whose waters were a tradition for they had long gone dry this well was situate in a sort of cave or deep scoop at the foot of a cliff of limestone to which the cultivated ground that led up to it fell somewhat high above the cliff broke away into a wide stretch of pasture land but at the face of the rock itself was all patched with bramble and little starved birch trees clutching for foothold and in like manner the excavation beneath was half stifled and gloomed over with undergrowth so that it looked a place very dismal and uninviting save in the order of the dog days within where had been the basin was a great shattered hole going down to unknown depths and this no man had thought to explore for a mystery held about the spot that was doubtless the foster child of ignorance but to the front of the well and of the cliff stretched a noble field of corn and this field was of an uncommon shape being roughly a vast circle and a little one joined by a neck and in suggestion not unlike an hour-glass and into the crop thereof which was of goodly weight and condition were their first sickles to be put on the morrow now as we stood or lay around idly discussing of the news and congratulating ourselves that we were fatally quit of our incubus to us along the meadow path his shadow jumping on the corn came the very subject of our gossip he strode up looking neither to right nor left and with the first word that fell lo and damnatory from his lips we knew that the moment had come when whether for good or evil he intended to cast us from him and acquit himself of further responsibility in our direction behold he cried pausing over against us i go from among ye behold ye that have not obeyed nor inclined your ear but have walked every one in the imagination of his evil heart saith the lord i will bring evil upon them which they shall not be able to escape and though they shall cry unto me i will not hearken unto them his voice rang out and a dark silence fell among us it was pregnant but with little of humility we had had enough of this interloper and his abuse then like jeremiah he went to prophesy i read ye men of anathoth and the murder in your hearts ye that have worshipped this shameful thing and burned incense to baal shall i cringe that ye devise against me or not rather pray to the lord of hosts let me see thy vengeance on them and he answereth i will bring evil upon the men of anathoth even the year of their visitation now though i was no participator in that direful thing that followed i stood by nor interfered and so must share the blame for there were men risen all about and their faces lowering and it seemed that it would go hard with the stranger were he not more particular but he moved forward with a stately and commanding gesture and stood with his back to the well scoop and threatened us and spoke lo your hour is upon you ye shall be mowed down like ripe corn and the shadow of your name shall be swept from the earth the glass of your iniquity is turned and when its sand is run through not a man of ye shall be he raised his arms aloft and in a moment he was overborne even then as all say none got sight of his face but he fought with lowered head and his black beard flapping like a wounded crow but suddenly a boy child ran forward of the bystanders crying and screaming hurt him not they are hurting him oh me oh me and from the sweat and struggle came his voice gasping i spare the little children then 
only i know of the surge and the crash towards the mouth well of an instant cessation of motion and immediately of men toiling hither and thither with boulders and huge blocks which they piled over the rent and so sealed it with a cromlech of stone part two that in the heat of rage and of terror we had gone farther than we had at first designed our gloom and our silence on the morrow attested true we were quit of our incubus but on such terms as not even the severity of the times could excuse for the man had but chastised us to our improvement and to destroy the scourge is not to condone the offence for myself as i bore up the little marjorie to my shoulder on my way to the reaping i felt the burden of guilt so great as that i found myself muttering up an apology to the lord that i durst put myself into touch with innocence but the walk would fatigue her otherwise i murmured and when we came to the field i took her and carried her into the upper or little meadow out of reach of the scythes and placed her to sleep amongst the corn and so left her with a groan but when i came anew to my comrades who stood at the lower extremity of the field and this was the bottom of the hour-glass so to speak i was aware of a stir amongst them and advancing closer that they were all intent upon the neighbourhood of the field i had left staring like distraught creatures and holding well together as if in a panic therefore following the direction of their eyes and of one that pointed with rigid finger i turned me about and looked whence i had come and my heart went with a somersault and in a moment i was all sick and dazed for i saw at the upper curve of the meadow where the well lay in gloom that a man had sprung out of the earth as it seemed and was started reaping and the face of this man was all in shadow from which his beard ran out and down like a stream of gall he reaped swiftly and steadily swinging like a pendulum but though the sheaths fell to him to the right and to left no swish of the scythe came to us nor any sound but the beating of our own hearts now from the first moment of my looking no doubt was in my lost soul but that this was him we had destroyed come back to verify his prophecy in ministering to the vengeance of the lord of hosts and at the thought a deep groan rent my bosom and was echoed by those about me but scarcely was it issued when a second terror smote me as that i near reeled marjorie my babe put to sleep there in the path of the black reaper at that though they called to me i sprang forward like a madman and running along the meadow through the neck of the glass reached the little thing and stooped and snatched her into my arms she was sound and unfrightened as i felt with a burst of thankfulness but looking about me as i turned again to fly i had near dropped in my tracks for the sickness and horror i experienced in the nearer neighbourhood of the apparition for though it never raised its head or changed the steady swing of its shoulders i knew that it was aware of and was reaping at me now i tell you it was ten yards away yet the point of the scythe came gliding upon me silently like a snake through the stalks and at that i screamed out and ran for my life i escaped sweating with terror but when i was sped back to the men there was all the village collected and our vicar to the front praying from a throat that rattled like a dead leaf in a draught i know not what he said for the low cries of the women filled the air but his face was white as a smock and his fingers writhed in one another like a knot of worms the plague is upon us they wailed we shall be mowed down like ripe corn and even as they shrieked the black reaper paused and putting away his scythe stooped and gathered up a sheaf in his arms and stood it on end and with the very act a man one that had been forward in yesterday's business fell down amongst us yelling and foaming and rent his breast in his frenzy revealing the purple blot thereon 
and he passed blaspheming and the reaper stooped and stooped again and with every sheaf he gathered together one of us fell stricken and rolled in his agony while the rest stood by palsied but when at length all that was cut was accounted for and a dozen of us were gone each to his judgment and he had taken up his scythe to reap anew a wild fury woke in the breast of some of the more abandoned and reckless amongst us it is not to be tolerated they cried let us at once fire the corn and burn the sorcerer and with that some five or six of them emboldened by despair ran up into the little field and separating had out each his flint and fired the crop in his own place and retreated to the narrow part for safety now the reaper rested on his scythe as if unexpectedly acquitted of a part of his labor but the corn flamed up in five or six directions and was consumed in each of the compass of a single sheaf whereat the fire died away and with its dying the faces of those that had ventured went black as coal and they flung up their arms screaming and fell prone where they stood and were hidden from our view then indeed despair seized upon all of us that survived and we made no doubt but that we were to be exterminated and wiped from the earth for our sins as were the men of anathoth and for an hour the black reaper mowed and trussed till he had cut all from the little upper field and was approached to the neck of juncture with the lower and larger and before us that remained and who were drawn back amongst the trees weeping and praying a fifth of our comrades lay foul and dead and sweltering and all blotched over with the dreadful mark of the pestilence now as i say the reaper was nearing the neck of juncture and so we knew that if he should once pass into the great field towards us and continue his mowing not one of us should be left to give earnest of our repentance then as it seemed our vicar came to a resolution moving forward with a face all rapt and entranced and he strode up the meadow path and approached the apparition and stretched out his arms to it entreating and we saw the other pause awaiting him and he came near put forth his hand and so gently on the good old head but as we looked catching at our breaths with a little pathos of hope the priestly face was thrown back radiant and the figure of him that would give his life for us sank among the yet standing corn and disappeared from our sight so at last we yielded ourselves fully to our despair for if our pastor should find no mercy what possibility of it could be for us it was in this moment of an uttermost grief and horror when each stood apart from his neighbor fearing the contamination of his presence that there was vouchsafed to me of god's pity a wild and sudden inspiration still to my neck fastened the little marjorie not frightened it seemed but mazed and other babes there were in plenty that clutched to their mother's skirts and peeped out wondering at the strange show i ran to the front and shrieked the children the children he will not touch the little children bring them and set them in his path and so crying i sped to the neck of meadow and loosened the soft arms from my throat and put the little one down within the corn now at once the women saw what i would be at and full a score of them snatched up their babes and followed me and here we were reckless for ourselves but we knelt the innocents in one close line across the neck of land so that the black reaper should not find space between any of them to swing his scythe and having done this we fell back with our hearts bubbling in our breasts and we stood panting and watched he had paused over that one full sheaf of his reaping but now with the sound of the women's running he seized his weapon up again and set to upon the narrow belt of corn that yet separated him from the children but presently coming out upon the tender array his scythe stopped and trailed in his hand and for a full minute 
he stood like a figure of stone then thrice he walked slowly backwards and forwards along the line seeking for an interval whereby he might pass and the children laughed at him like silver bells showing no fear and perchance meeting that of love in his eyes that was hidden from us then of a sudden he came to before the midmost of the line and while we drew our breath like dying souls stooped and snapped his blade across his knee and holding the two parts in his hand turned and strode back into the shadow of the dripping well there arrived he paused once more and twisting him about waved his hand once to us and vanished into the blackness but there were those who affirmed that in that instant of his turning his face was revealed and that it was a face radiant and beautiful as an angel's such is the history of the wild judgment that befell us and by the grace of the little children was foregone and such was the stranger whose name no man ever heard tell but whom many have since sought to identify with that spirit of the pestilence that entered into men's hearts and confounded them so that they saw visions and were afterwards confused in their memories and this i may say that when at last our courage would fetch us to that little field of death we found it to be all blackened and blasted so as nothing would take root there then or ever since and it was as if after all the golden sand of the hour-glass was run away and the lives of the most impious with it the destroyer saw fit to stay his hand for the sake of the babes that he had pronounced innocent and for such as were spared to witness to his judgment and this i do here with a heart as contrite as if it were the morrow of the visitation the which with me it ever has remained End of the black reaper recording by angelique g campbell september two thousand eighteen